Welcome back to At the Table. I'm Audrey Gaelic. So thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I've always wondered how we develop healthy relationships with family, with friends, and our guest in this portion of our show. Uh, I believe believes that it starts starts at the earliest moment of life in infancy. Uh, I'd like to welcome to At the Table Kathy Frankel. She is a physical therapist and a neurodevelopmental specialist. And you've worked in 35 years, or uh, for 35 years, observing and studying infant development. And she has written this book, Here I Am. And it is obviously a board book, so it's meant for the youngest people among us. Thanks for being with us. It's a thrill to be here. So what have you observed about healthy relationships that are nurtured and born when we are born, if not before? Well, one thing I've noticed is that when a mom and when a family finds out they're going to have a baby, they immediately start that relationship with the baby. So what we've learned that bio, biology tells us is that people start connecting way before we're born. And the baby actually learns and encodes the sounds of voices and all the nuances of a mother and father's behaviors or partner's behaviors before they come out. So once they are born, um, they almost know their parents. They can immediately recognize their scent. They can localize their voices and the sounds of their voices. And they can find the breast to, to, to nurse if they're allowed to do that at birth. So we come in with a set of attachments. And when parents are able to explore and learn about those attachments early on, it has much greater meaning than it just sort of happening. So how does this book, uh, I guess, nurture or strengthen those attachments? Yes. It just sounds like that's perhaps one of the reasons you wrote that's this. That's one reason I wrote it. So uh, if you notice a lot of baby books, there's a lot of how to be a parent books. And what then, to expect. <laughs> what to the, expect yeah, and, and how all the things are supposed to happen. So they're very procedural. And then there's a, there are some um, psychology books about emotional connection and how to help your baby develop. But those aren't always read by parents um, early yeah. on. They're in the, more in the thick of it, right. Yeah, no. they're more likely to think about how do I get through the night, how do I do sleep, you know, how do I feed or how do I breastfeed? Um, and there's a lot of questions around that and rightly so, but we don't think as much about what should the early emotional environment be and how should we connect early and why is that important? So I looked at what baby little board books that parents are being told to read to their babies. What was the content? And the content is mostly about just color or animals shapes or shapes. Yeah, mm -hmm. or, you know, this is my mom, this is my dad. So I wanted to write a poem and um, that would inspire emotional connection without telling you how to emotionally connect because I think parents feel a bit um, lost at first when they have a baby. There's no... Especially the first. Yeah, there is no... Apologies to my daughter, my oldest. All of our kids should be second kids, that's <laughs> the way I think. Um, but yeah, so learning how to gently support a family and emotionally connect to their baby without being over, overly didactic or overly authoritarian. You should do this. Yeah, you I mean, shouldn't. we all, yeah, and we all get this blame, you know, like, oh, you're holding your baby too much or you're not holding your baby enough or they should be sleeping by the, through the night by now. You know, we always feel like we're doing something that's not, that's not right. And what I wanted to give permission to families is to listen to their child, to be present and watch that the child will lead you in what they need. And if you stay connected and stay observing. That, that's almost, it, it flips parenting maybe on its head yeah, a little bit. It I does. Suppose. But if you think about establishing a relationship with your child like that from the beginning, not imposing your will and your schedule on them and working together to create this relationship, you what know. an interesting thing. I, I don't want to belabor this. Yeah. No pun intended, but yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I know that in some uh, situations, living uh, residences with uh, older adults are beginning to understand that that's important too. More Absolutely. patient directed. Absolutely. Interesting at both Following ends of the in. lifespan. Yes, I can tell a story about on two different ends giving a baby a bath, for example. A lot of times babies cry in their bath. 
And what I like to tell is that people is that, you know, especially if you're a hospitalized baby, the bath might be the most pleasurable thing that you get all day. So doing what we can do to prevent crying, to make it, you know, relaxing. So using warm water, swaddling the baby in the bath, um, you know, going slow, making sure the baby's calm and happy during the bath instead of just trying to rush through it. So it's all, it's all about listening to the other person. And when I take that to the elderly, sometimes I would watch people with Alzheimer's receiving a bath and they were upset and screaming. Or, and, and I would say, what can we do to listen mm -hmm. to this person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. Yeah. I uh, would love to invite you to, uh, I don't know, page through and you have yeah. a particular yeah, passage well, that could illustrate what you're talking one about. One thing I want to talk about is the, the title, Here mm -hmm. I Am, because um, I actually was very moved by our friend Rabbi Josh's sermon of Hineni. That's Joshua Lesser. Josh Lesser, yes. Yes, we'll yeah. give them a plug since they have inspired me so much to and do. And Hineni is Hebrew for? Here I am. And so when you say, here I am, you're saying, I am present and I'm listening, mm. and I'm here for you. And so starting that off, just being present for your child and not having an agenda, but listening to see what they need and want to do is very important. So I wanted to inspire that with this uh, title. And then I was very purposeful about the pictures that I chose. I tried to be, you know, reach people of all different you know, ways of life and cultures, even though I believe that having a baby is, you know, across the board should be pretty neutral. I think there is a lot of bias built into when mothers go into the hospital to have babies and they may be experiencing bias. So we want to try to start off on a neutral a neutral foot with this with this book. And bias in terms of how they are treated? Yes, I mean, if you're low income, if you are un, you know, underserved, underinsured, you are often treated differently than those who, go, who, are, who are insured. If you might not speak English, it's all, it can be complicated. Um, some pa people have birth plans, some people don't. So, you know, there's just a lot of variation and I wanted this book to serve everyone. And, um, one of the lines in the book is, um, from the inside out, I know you. And I wanted people to think about the fact that the baby already knows who they are. And when the baby comes out, they recognize their parents. Mm -hmm. And that can create this amazing emotional connection between the group, the family. So. The other thing that I mention is that my heart beats with yours, and we know that there is this amazing biobehavioral stability that occurs when you put a baby skin to skin, and the heart re the heartbeats will and the heart rates will synchronize. So, um, you know, having that experience and asking for that time after your baby's born to just be able to place them on your skin for at least several hours after birth is hugely important. It's interesting, there's so many cultures that do that because do that of the need anyway. for you know, parents to perhaps be working and their, their children yeah. held close to them. They do, they tie them on and we tend to not do that, mm -hmm. but there is, a, there is a much bigger uh, effort now towards baby wearing, I've noticed. You know, which is really, there's clubs and all kinds of things I've heard about, so yeah. Wow, um, other things in the book to sort of bring a parent in is to observe the baby's breathing, that when you put your hand near their, their face or their head, their nostrils will flare as if they are trying to breathe you in and, and they recognize your scent. So those things are all very important in establishing connection. It's not just looking, it's not just hearing, but it's, it's this whole sensory experience of smell and taste of breast milk. Well, imagine what that does both, you know, for the connection of the baby to the parent, the parent to the, the baby. That's right. That, it's this bi-directional piece that if the mother and father or partner can observe these behaviors, 
Now you've worked a lot in neonatal uh, intensive care I units, have. and so you must observe, you know, babies that don't get this in initial initial opportunity to do right. that. Right, and that that is the piece that is so interesting about this book because when a mom or when a family has a baby that's sick, the baby's usually removed from them and taken to the unit. And so maybe the first time or the second time they get to see their baby, they're attached to tubes and they're in a they're in a bed and they're in a strange space. And um, it can be very, very hard on parents. And so to try to refocus them in on the person, on the baby that's there, rather than, me than the medical condition, is very healing for both, for everyone. Now, I understand the proceeds from the sale of this book in part are going to help a refugee yes. uh, infant program. With. Yes, so um, I have been volunteering with refugees in Atlanta for about um, 20 years now. and. As I grew more comfortable in the community of uh, refugee families, I um, found out about a program that helped moms in labor and delivery, and it's called Embrace, and it's under the umbrella of Friends of Refugees. It's a beautiful program where they pair someone with a, a mother, and we um, go to all her appointments with her. We make sure she goes to all her medical appointments, and feels comfortable in the medical community, make sure they get translate, there's translation and things like that. And then we go to the delivery because a lot of the um, fathers are working or have to look after their own other children, people who are displaced in America from their home country don't have the same social networks that we have when we're here. So there might not be anyone to leave their other children with. Um, so it's a, a little bit of a less traditional path of birth, but we act as sort of volunteer doulas. And what was so fascinating to me was that every mom, no matter where they're from, loves to have their babies on their chest. And every baby loves to crawl to find the breast. So this is universal. But given what you know yes. about infant development and, and parenting at that early stage, what are your hopes and dreams for the future, as well as perhaps some suggestions for action steps to reach that future? Yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of policy around what happens to mothers and babies and families at birth, and I think that we need to pour more attention into that time. I think all families deserve the right to hold their baby skin to skin after birth, if at all possible, and to have a protected, safe time to allow that, that emotional connection to, to occur. It is vital. We need to protect that with policy, hospital policies, with government policies, anything that we can do to keep families together. It is a human right for a parent and a baby to be together. So if babies are removed from their parent into the NICU, everything must be done to bring them back together. Kathy Frankel, thank you so very much for being with us. She's the author of Here I Am. Thanks again, and thank you for being with us at the table. We'll see you next time.